Hey everyone, and welcome to week two. We made it through week one, Nikki. I know, check that one off the list. Yes. Yes, decision one done. Now we're moving on to decision two, which is to listen to God, which I have a lot of questions about listening to God. I find it very hard to do. Mm -hmm. But before we get into all that, I do have a fun question I want to ask you. Okay. Um, So Nikki has worked with online Bible studies before. You've been an author, but also you used to be on staff with online Bible Mm -hmm. studies. Mm -hmm. And I tell people that I feel like I do your job now so you like much better you, than yeah me. right you really set the scene and then I came in um, once you started writing books but what would you say is your favorite thing about online Bible studies oh goodness Kendra this is a hard question because I love everything about <laughs> online Bible studies but you know what I I think one of the things I love the most is just how um, organic mm. this all began you know I was there since so day one with Melissa Taylor sitting at that desk up. you guys were the dynamic duo yes truly <laughs> I mean the, you, well what you guys did you've done you are an answer to prayer and you ha- you're incredible we love Kendra <laughs> um, so I just love how you know it just really started from a place of authenticity like mm-hmm. Melissa just needed somewhere to process what yeah. she was going through she couldn't get to Bible study anymore and we know so many of you cannot get to a Bible study especially in the season that we're in right now. And so I love how we meet people right where they're at. I also love that you don't have to know big theological words. Isn't that great? (laughs) Yes, you do not need to know those. To talk, to (laughs) be a part of this and, you know, uh, keep up. But it it allows you to get a little bit deeper. Mm -hmm. Every study takes you a little bit deeper, you know, a little bit more. And it just makes you a little bit wiser. That's right, Nikki. Well, gosh, we're so grateful for you. And we're grateful for the wisdom that you're going to provide. And so what we're going to do now is what we talked about last week which is called our Doubt Diary segment. And this week we have somebody who is so near and dear to my heart. Her name is Kwani. And Kwani is a woman who is raising three kids. Yes. And she also is in the process, she'll talk about this a little bit, but of building a home, which is very mm-hmm. exciting. But and she, stressful. Stressful. <laughs> From what I've heard, it is very stressful. Yes. But she has gone through a lot of setbacks. And we think her doubt diary is really going to fall in line with listening to God, which is our the second decision. And so let's hear from Kwani. Hi, I'm Kwani. And I've been a longtime volunteer with Proverbs 31 for a few years. I want to share something with you I've been struggling with. I've been wrestling in the tension of knowing God is good and that his timing is perfect, but walking out what that looks like in everyday life. For example, my family has been involved in the home building process for quite a few months. And one thing after another keeps delaying our progress. And y'all, I believe this is our good thing, okay? But it seems like the movement of this good thing has been super slow. And sometimes, y'all, it seems like no progress is being made at all. So where I struggle, and maybe you too, is seeing things in my life not going according to plan. Well, my plan. And y'all, it's hard to continue in obedience when one thing after another doesn't seem to pan out. If you've ever been here, you're not alone. I totally understand. So what are some practical ways we can continue to be obedient in the midst of change, setbacks, and life not going according to what we planned? Well, I absolutely love Kwani. I think she's great. She She used to be a study leader for us. You might have seen her on the blog before, but um, I've learned so much from Kwani and just her cadence and her voice. Yeah. So calming. Yes. Yes. (laughs) So Nikki, what would you say to what what she said? Yeah. Well, I think a lot of people can relate to what Kwani is experiencing. Maybe you're not building a house, but you're walking through something that just doesn't ever seem like it's actually going to happen. Yeah. And what an appropriate time in our study as we're looking at Noah and the fact that he has received this massive assignment from God, right? Mm -hmm. God tells him that he's going to build this ark. He's got to bring all these animals onto it. That mass destruction to the world is coming and he's carrying this heavy load. Mm -hmm. And so the reality is, is that I think sometimes when we study Noah, we think, oh, well, that was just like a couple of months, right? Like he just built the ark. and Truly. That's what I thought until I read your book. (laughs) It's like a hundred years of him obeying and being faithful Mm -hmm. to what God had 
put in him. And so do you think that there were times where Noah, like Kwani's like, what are we doing? Is this really worth it? Like, honestly, is this what God really has planned for us? And so I think all of you today could think of something in your life where you felt God say something. Mm -hmm. You felt God say, this is your step of obedience. And then you started to take those steps. And then all of a sudden, it just feels like nothing is going to happen. Right. Seems very quiet and still and confusing. Yes. And so this is not a quote from this book. It's actually a quote from my other book, but it applies to this one. So in Why Her, I talk about this concept of when God is quiet, we need to get quiet. So good. Because God is not actually ever quiet. It's Mm -hmm. just when it seems like he's not speaking to us, it's actually us are the ones that are not listening. We are the problem. Yes. Yes. So this week you're going to talk about, or you're going to read and study about how Noah, um, you know, there really are no words that we have to study from Noah until the very ending, which is a hot mess coming, I promise. Um, (laughs) But we have no words, like we have no conversations with God. We just see two things. God commands, Mm -hmm. Noah obeys. Mm -hmm. God commands, Noah obeys. And so... I see from that these decisions start to come through because here's mm-hmm. the thing. Obedience stems from what? A decision. A decision. Right. We have to actually, like, obedience doesn't just come natural mm-hmm. to us, right? So this second decision to listen to God, uh, I'm going to challenge you this week to do something you probably are not used to doing. Um, this week we talk about one of the eight spiritual disciplines, which is that of being silent. Mm. Is silence hard for you? Oh, silence is so hard. I Even after I read your book, Mickey, I was like, I'll try this challenge that you're about to give. <laughs> Have I done it since? No, but I'm excited to try again. (laughs) Yes, yes. Always keep trying, keep trying. But it really is important. In fact, throughout the scriptures, we see that there are many times where God is just like, be still Mm -hmm. and just listen to what he's telling us. And so listening comes in a variety of forms. It can come from your Bible study, like when you're reading the word of God. You know, how many times have you read a verse and something like pops out the next time that you didn't see before? Right. Um, But you weren't actually talking. You were just listening Mm -hmm. and reading. But then there's other times where the Holy Spirit, he speaks to us Mm -hmm. and he reveals things to us. Normally, the things that the Holy Spirit reveals to me are things that I need to change about myself. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, And doubt is one of those areas that we need to change. We need to challenge this area in our life. So like Kwani, she's in process. You are in process. I'm in process. Kendra is in process. God hasn't asked any of us to walk through this with perfection, Mm -hmm. but as we walk with God, it's going to require actually listening to God. And that's going to mean silencing some of the things around us so that we can hear. So Kendra, uh, one of the things that I've been doing personally in my life over the past couple of weeks, you know, I'm really good about starting my days listening to God. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I've got my devotion time in the morning. I'll write in the morning. That time I've got great. You start really strong. Really strong. (laughs) But then about three o'clock when everyone starts getting off virtual school and, you know, the animals need to be fed and all the busyness of the day, like God just becomes like (laughs) super distant in my mind. Mm -hmm. And so God really challenged me. He said, you start your days really well, but you don't end your days really well. Mm -hmm. And so I found myself at night, you know, just doing mindless activities to not have to think about anything. Right. And so I've actually been cutting off my social media about eight o'clock and really just listening mm-hmm. to the thing, not even listening to sermons or worship Just music, really trying to be quiet. Just trying to be quiet as much as you can in a house full of teenagers. Yeah, <laughs> that's a really great point. But it really is helping me get to this place where I'm able to feel stronger in my listening. Wow. And Nikki, something, I grew up in the church. And so when I heard people say, you know, God told me or God spoke to me, I assumed it was this audible voice that I was missing out on and somehow God was never speaking to me. But I love how you pulled out, maybe it's just reading scripture and something pops out at yes. you or yeah. um, maybe it's just repetition. You hear something in a sermon and then you hear your friends say something and it's just mm-hmm. something that confirmation. Um, confirmation. And yeah. so yeah. if you struggle with feeling like it's an audible voice all the time, that's not necessarily the case. It's not. So I'm glad you bring that yeah. up. Yeah, it's not. In fact, in the book, I do share one story I think we're going to read this week. Um, of a time where I really did hear from God, yes. like uh, uh, something I would not say was an audible voice, but it was something very strong in my spirit that yeah. I felt that. But I'll tell you, that's like one time mm-hmm. out of a thousand moments that I have with God where 
I don't hear things like that. Mm-hmm. But I know that he's always speaking, but am I listening? Yeah, that's good, Nikki. Well, thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Thank you for responding to Kwani. Yes, Kwani, thank you. All right, everyone. Well, we're going to enter into week two. And the decision we're talking about, like we said before, is to listen to God. And so we're excited to learn from Nikki, learn from the word. And like we say here at Proverbs 31 Ministries, when you know the truth and live the truth, it changes everything. And we look forward to doing study right alongside you. Thank you.